Hi class, before we continue with our topic for this video, I'd like to summarize the four non-parametric statistical tests that we have discussed previously. Now, everyone knows that the sign rank test is the non-parametric version of the one sample Z and T test. And we've also learned that the Wilcoxon rank sum test corresponds to the two sample Z and T tests. Meanwhile, the kruskal wallis test is the non-parametric version of the one-way ANOVA. In the previous video, we've also discussed the RANS test, which helps us test for the randomness of a sequence of a data set. So today, we are going to learn about the Spearman rank correlation coefficient. Now, the Spearman rank correlation coefficient measures the strength and direction of monotonic association between pet data. Before we learn about the Spearman's correlation, it is important to understand the Pearson correlation. Uh, which we have discussed in the correlation and simple linear regression chapter. And we have learned that Pearson's correlation is a statistical measure of the strength of linear relationship between paired data. So the Spearman rank correlation coefficient is the non-parametric version of the Pearson correlation coefficient. And look at the symbol instead of R, which we normally use for the Pearson correlation coefficient. We'll be using R sub S. And the ranges of the Spearman correlation coefficient also is similar to the Pearson's correlation coefficient, which ranges from minus 1 to 1. Now, instead of measuring for the strength of the linear association between pet data, the Spearman rank correlation measures the strength of monotonic association between pet data. Let's look at the meaning of monotonic functions. But before that class, when do we use the Spearman rank correlation coefficient or the Spearman rank correlation test? When? our data is not normally distributed or when our data is non-numeric and when it is not linearly related. To understand Spearman's correlation, it is necessary to know the meaning of monotonic function. So a monotonic function is a function that either never increases or never decreases as the independent variable increases. So let's say here we have our independent variable as x and our dependent variable y and here we have a monotonically increasing function. Um, it looks something like this. Now, what we could see is, as the value of the x variable increases, the y variable never decreases. Okay, so this is monotonically increasing. Now, let's say again we have the x variable and y variable here. And I have a function like this one. Okay, what we see here is as the x variable increases, the y variable decreases. It never increases. So this function is called monotonically decreasing. Because as x increases, y only decreases. It never increases. Okay, what if we have something like this then? 
this is our x and y and we have something like this look at the function that we have here as x increases the y variable sometimes decreases and sometimes increases so this kind of function is not monotonic so class Spearman's correlation coefficient is a statistical measure of the strength of monotonic relationships that means the one here and here between paired data and the values ranges from minus 1 to 1 as we've discussed before similar to Pearson's correlation so when the value is minus 1 then the strength of relationship is perfect negative correlation and if the value is plus 1 then the relationship would be perfect positive correlation and if the value is very close to zero, it has very weak monotonic relationship. And if the value is from 0 0.3 to 0 0.7, then it is considered as moderate strength of monotonic relationship. So this is similar to Pearson's correlation coefficient. Let's look at this example. Let us consider the following example data regarding the marks. So the marks ranges from 0 to 20, um, achieved by 8 students. So we have 8 samples in a math and English quiz. So these are the English quiz marks and the math quiz marks at alpha 0 0.05. So this is the level of significance. That's the hypothesis that there is a significant linear correlation between the student's math and English quiz course. So besides calculating the Spearman's correlation coefficient, we would also be testing the hypothesis if there exists a significant linear correlation between the student's math and English quiz course. So let's start now. We start by defining the hypothesis or stating the hypothesis. In this case, the hypothesis would be a constant. Our null hypothesis is that there is no significant linear correlation between English and math scores. We write it as rho s. Now, if you still remember, the parameter for correlation coefficient is rho. So, R is the sample statistics. This is the population parameter. And the subscript S denotes that this test is for the Spearman's correlation coefficient. So, is equals to zero. What does this mean? This means that there is no linear correlation between the students maths and English scores and the alternative which is also a constant for all Spearman's rank correlation tests is rho s is not equals to zero which means that there exists a linear correlation or there is a significant linear correlation. Okay class, now we are going to compute the test statistic, which is also the Spearman's correlation coefficient. How we do that is, the score with the highest value would be labeled 1. So we know that the highest value is 20, and the smallest value would be 0. So I'm going to label 20 as 1. And the lowest score would be labeled N. 
So n is the total number of samples. In this case, in our example here, n would be 8. So I'm labeling 20 as 1 and then 18 as 2 and we have 12 as 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. And we will be ranking the scores in a similar way for the math quiz marks. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So the highest score would be 1 and the lowest score would be 8. Now, when you have two identical values, which doesn't exist in this data, um, those are called a tie, you need to take the average of the ranks that they would have otherwise occupied. So if um, the value here is 6 and 6, then the average of 8 and 7 would be 7.5 and 7.5. Is this clear? So if this value is 6 instead of 4, then these two rank here will not be 8 and 7. Instead, it will be 8 plus 7 divided by 2, which is 7.5. Okay, I hope this is clear for you. So, we are going to go to the next step. Okay, next we are going to subtract the rankings x1 minus x2. And then square the differences and then find the sum of squares and substitute in this formula to get the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. So let's do that first. We are going to subtract the rankings and then square and find the sum of squares. So this was the rank that we had just now. Okay, so the English rank is denoted as x1 in math as x2. We are going to find the differences between these two ranks. So 7 minus 8 would be minus 1. 4 minus 7 would be minus 3. And then 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 minus 3 would be minus 2. 1, 3, 2 and minus 1. Okay, then what we do is we square these values. So we have here 1, 9, 1, 4, 1, 9, 4 and 1. And remember class, the next step is to sum the square. So we need to total up d square. And we have here the value is 30. Okay. And our final step is to calculate the RS or the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. So this will be 1 minus 6 multiplied by 30 divided by our n is now our sample size which is 8 multiplied by 8 square minus 1 and our answer would be 0 0.643. So the strength of the monotonic relationship between x1 and x2 is medium strength or moderate strength. And now we will look for the critical value. To do that, we need to check the table. So let's go to our final exam appendix. Okay. It is at table L, right? It says critical values for the rank correlation coefficient. And our alpha is 0 0.05 and our N is 8. So the test statistic would be 0 0.738. Okay, so how do we make the decision? It says here in the table, that we reject the null hypothesis if the absolute value of Rs is greater than the value given in the table. So we will do that in a short while. So the critical value 
is 0 0.738. So our decision would be to reject the null hypothesis if the absolute value of Rs is greater than the critical value given in the table. Then we reject the null hypothesis. So let's check. The absolute value of our correlation coefficient is 0 0.64. 3 is not greater than 0 0.738 so we accept the null hypothesis so let's make a decision and conclusion we accept the null hypothesis at alpha 0 0.05 and then we will have to answer the question. That's the hypothesis that there is a significant linear correlation between the student's math and English quiz scores. So we would conclude by saying that there is not enough evidence that there is a significant linear correlation between the student's math and English quiz scores. And class, why did I say this? Because we accepted the null hypothesis. Um, let's look at our hypothesis. Alright, so because we accept the null hypothesis, we will reject the alternative. And so there is no linear correlation. Okay class, we have come to the end of your syllabus. We have completed the non-parametric test which is the final chapter of your engineering statistics. I would like to thank you for your attention and I would like to wish you all the best for your final exam.